Hey, welcome back. It's Jason Walter here. In today's video, I have an update for you regarding the California housing market. This is thanks to a new report that was just released this morning. And in this report that I'm going to share with you, they show that the median sold price in California has now decreased for the third month in a row. So I'm going to be breaking this down for you guys, showing how each region in California fared and also how each county in California fared as well. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm gonna be sharing my screen with you right now. So this is again from the California Association of Realtors. They just released this uh, today at the time of this video, which is a Thursday the 16th. So this is for November 2021. They typically release their housing stats about three weeks, two to three weeks after month end. So this is the most recent stats that we have for you guys. So again, this is California housing market, obviously. Um, the existing home sales reached 454,000. That's down 10.7% compared to uh, one year ago, so compared to November 2020. Uh, home prices there uh, went down actually 7 to 782. This is the median sold price in California. That's an increase of 12% compared to one year ago. But I'm going to be showing you some stats here to show that this is the, actually the third month in a row where the home prices actually decreased. An unsold inventory index is at 1.6 months. In order to have a more balanced real estate market, we need this figure to be in the range of three to five months. Uh, if we wanna have a buyer's market where buyers have the advantage over home sellers, we need this number to be over six months. And we're also down 15.8% uh, compared to one year ago. So median days in the market, again, this is the date from when a, a home seller lists their house for sale to when they ultimately accept an offer from a home buyer. So on average, or the median of days in the market is 11 days. That's actually an increase of 22% from one year ago. But I'm gonna be showing you guys um, how low this number really is. Uh, this is an increase basically from a record lows that we saw in the state. So let's go over at a high level um, uh, each of the major regions in California. I'm gonna be sharing some data regarding um, all the changes here um, as well, and also share the at the county level here later in the video. I wanna make one video today rather than breaking this video up in two videos like I've been doing the past couple of months. So in any case, Southern California, Existing home sales are actually down, uh, but the year-to-date unchanged are 12.7%. Uh, existing home price, this is again, the existing home sale um, price for houses that sold. And this is the median sold price, 750,000 in SoCal. Uh, unsold inventory index, uh, very similar across the state, as well as the median days in the market. Uh, sales price to list price ratio, I'm gonna be sharing some stats with you regarding this here in just a little bit. But on average, home sellers are getting 1.3% more than their asking price. That's what this means here. Um, so uh, in Central Coast, it's 100.7. So still they're getting more on average over their asking price, but not as much as Southern California. So Central Coast um, has some really interesting stats to share with you once I share at the county level. Uh, but in any case, days on the market, unsold inventory index, very similar to statewide numbers. Uh, but the uh, home prices there, 899,000, uh, quite a bit more than other areas such as the Central Valley, uh, where I'm located. So Central Valley, existing home price there is 452,000. That's the median sold price. And again, uh, the inventory index, very similar. Days in the market, it's a little bit less, but house is still selling more than the asking price. Bay Area, this is really interesting. I'm, I'm really excited to share some data with you guys for this because um, San Francisco is definitely rebounding, whereas other areas outside of San Francisco are not faring uh, or not doing as well as they once were uh, earlier on during this pandemic. So Bay Area prices, check this out. $1.3 million is a median sold price in November. It's just crazy. Uh, but that's an 18.2% increase, quite a bit more than we see across the uh, entire uh, state. So statewide average is 11.9%. Uh, so Bay Area, um, almost double that, almost. Uh, unsold inventory index and median days in the market, all very similar, but you know the sales price to list price ratio, home sellers are getting on average 5.7% over their asking price. And I uh, made a video, or I included in a video about how a uh, home in San Francisco, it was listed for 2.5 million and it sold for $3.5 million. So $1 million over the asking price and it sold in three days. That's San Francisco for you right now. Uh, the far north, we're not right now. That's kind of unusual, but still homes are selling for far more than the asking price. Uh, the far north, um, prices there, 380,000. 
uh, index, uh, the unsold index is quite a bit more. Also days in the markets more as well. Those houses there are selling for a little bit less than the seller's asking price. All right, let's talk about home sales and I'm gonna be sharing some data regarding home prices. All right, so home sales are bounced back. They reached their highest level in seven months. So the home sales on a year to date basis increased 10.6%. When you compare it to one year ago, we're down 10.7%. However, you see this compared to October 2021 to November 2021, we're up almost 5%. So it's pretty remarkable you look at this because obviously we had the stay at home orders for about a month and a half uh, starting in, I believe it was middle of March 2020. And that was obviously when we had a very a low amount of home sales. And then the market just absolutely went crazy uh, late in 2020. Um, also, it's important to note here too that uh, this is home sales. They've been on this like downward trend here, uh, but they have been increasing for the second part of the year. Uh, and if you look at on a historical level, I really don't look at 2020 because I think it's like comparing apples to oranges. Uh, 2020 and this year really is not as really unlike any other we've really had. But what I really look at is 2019. I don't really look too much at 2018, especially this time of year, because in 2018, in November, is when uh, the average 30-year uh, fixed rate mortgage reached almost 5%. So that's why home sales dipped quite a bit in the last half of 2018. Therefore, I think it's more accurate to look at 2019 to see how this compares to now. Um, but you can see in 2019, we had a little slight dip in the summer months um, for home sales, but we have the home sales tend to kind of have their ebbs and flows um, every single every single month. And obviously you look back to 2005 to 2007, home sales absolutely tanked. But important to note that you know we're at its highest level in seven months right now. Uh, but of course, we're still down compared to one year ago, but it's been leveling off. We had a really big a decrease uh, towards the tail end of this year, uh, but we've been fairly flat, but still down compared to 2020. So here's something I wanna point out with you guys because we had this uh, disproportionate share of luxury home sales in across the nation really, but also in California because we've had more luxury home sales really uh, compared to the more like affordable areas or more affordable um, price points. And you can see this here because this is again, November, 2021, and this is the year to year change. So this is November, 2020 compared to November, 2021. Uh, so this is the uh, percentage of of home sales uh, by price range. So if you look at the $2 million plus range for houses that sold for over $2 million, those increased by 41% compared to one year ago. 1 million to 1.99 million increase of 10%, also an increase um, above 750 as well. When we look at um, 500,000 to 750, or I should say less than 750,000, it's been decreasing. You look at the uh, more affordable price point of zero to, well, not zero, one dollar really, to uh, 299,000, a decrease of 46,000. And this is really because home prices increased so much, we're not seeing too many areas where you can buy a house in California for less than 300,000. That's why they decrease quite a bit. And this number has been increasing as well because, you know, of course, I track this on a monthly basis as well. So let's look at this because uh, this is really uh, is really good uh, graphic depiction of um, how um, home sales have varied by price point. So dark blue here is uh, two million dollars or more uh, for houses that sold in California. As you can see here, this is the spring months of this year. We reached over 300% um, increase compared to the prior month uh, for houses that sold for over two million dollars. So a huge uptick in the luxury home sale market uh, in the spring months. Um, but what we're seeing here, uh, everything has been decreasing, but look at this. Everything else has been kind of leveling off, but over the past a month or two, uh, home sales of $2 million plus has actually been, actually been increasing. Um, but it's interesting to see though, and that's one reason why um, the median sold price overall in the state has been increasing because we've seen this um, uh, more sales on the um, upper end than on the lower end. Here's another good graphic I want to share with you guys here too. By the way, too, at the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing um, at a county level as well, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so the gap between low end and high end has narrowed. As you can see here, this red line depicts of when we had the COVID um, outbreak. Uh, at that time, we had about 45% of the home sales were in the range of, um, or were less than 500,000. And then uh, around about, well, let's just say less than 20% were $1 million or more. And that gap has been narrowing. In other words, 
the number of home sales over uh, less than 500,000 has been decreasing, but luxury home sales has been increasing. And right now, it's been more or less about the same. So uh, this is the percent of sales in these price range. So about the same number of home sales over 1 million compared to less than 500,000. Uh, pending home sales, this is um, obviously when a seller accepts an offer and ultimately becomes a closed home sale in a month or two. So typically our close of escrow uh, time periods in California is about 30 days. So if a um, you know, home goes pending in November, end of November, it's probably gonna close the end of December, beginning of January. Uh, in any case, pending home sales have been decreasing quite a bit, but as we can see here, it's still less compared to one year ago because here's a zero line, but the decrease has been um, decreasing. I don't, know, better, I don't know a better way of saying that, but uh, before it was around like 19, I think about 15%. Now pending home sales is down 9% uh, compared to one year ago. Uh, and you can see here, it's been across all price points too. So ever since uh, January, 2021, pending home sales have been more or less um, declining. But as you can see here, uh, the sales of $2 million really flattened out, but they started to increase. And this is all same for all price points really starting back to about uh, this fall really. Uh, the only segment where we had an increase of pending home sales is a range of 500 to 750,000. All right, so talk about home prices. Um, I have some data to share with you guys regarding this. So in any case, the median sold price uh, in California in November 2021, 782,000. That's down actually 2% compared to um, the previous month, and but up 11.9% compared to one year ago. Uh, but this is the second consecutive month um, that we've had the median sold price drop below 800,000, and we're at the lowest uh, since March of 2021. I wanna share some graphics with you guys. Uh, this is a download that I pulled from the California Association of Realtors, and I wanna share how a January of figures compared to 2021. In 2019, the median sold price in California reached its highest mark uh, in August, and that was at $617,000. And then in this year, we reached a record high home prices uh, in August as well. So 827,000 was the all time um, high uh, for the California soul prices. So I wanna point out this. So here, here's something to really um, focus on here. So uh, we reached record highs in August, prices decreased in September, October, and now November, right? And so we're now at two months straight where we were below 800,000. The last time we reached 782,000 or less than that was back in March. So let's look at 2019 though, right? 617, prices decreased in September, they were flat in October, and they decreased again in November. But look what happened in, in December. For no reason whatsoever, uh, home prices increased um, just, just below uh, the uh, highs of August, right? So I don't wanna say, oh gosh, the housing market's tanking because we've had three straight months where the median sold price in California decreased. Uh, we want to see more long-term trends, right? So let's see what happens in December of 2021, or I should say next month, and also going to into spring of next year. So I just want to share that with you guys. I think it's a really uh, good depiction about, you know, 2019 home prices went up and down, up and down. They were flat for uh, September to October. So we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen in the next few months to, in order to kind of quantify or understand where the housing market is headed in California. So anyways, want to mention that. Um, also, we also have some ebbs and flows with the market as well. So uh, the median sold price or home prices in California and also across the nation really tend to peak in the summer months. So that's why we have this up and down, up and down, up and down where it goes down in the winter months. So that's very common. 2020, unlike any other um, year we've had where home prices increased almost throughout the entire year. And then this spring was absolutely nuts in California. Uh, home prices increased so much and we had so much activity, but we've been leveling off. And that's what we typically see each year. Uh, we'll have to see what happens uh, in going into the spring though, right? All right, so here's another important thing I wanna point out as well. So condos and townhomes, they have been increasing to record high levels. So the median sold price in California for November 2021, 620,000. When you compare that to November 2020, it was 520,000. So that's about a 19% increase year over year, which is actually more than a single family home in California. And it's normally the opposite. More often than not, single family houses increase in value more uh, than condos, but at least for um, for condos right now, at least for the ones that are selling, the um, price increase is more compared to single family houses. I'm gonna be sharing that with you in just a little bit here. But in any case, as you can see here, 
you know, condo prices have been increasing ever since around 2012, this slow, gradual increase. But ever since really this year, absolutely have skyrocketed to levels we have not seen before. So basically in one year, we've increased 100,000. Uh, but gosh, look at this, 2015 in September, around 400,000. It took us all the way until about 2020-ish to reach another 100,000. So it took us about five years to increase 100,000, whereas it only took one year to increase um, to the levels we have right now, which is quite remarkable. Uh, in my opinion, I think a lot of people are moving to condos because of affordability issues, because home prices in California for single family houses have increased so much. Um, so price per square foot uh, nears an all time high. We saw all time highs a few months ago, but right now the price per square foot is about 393. All right, so overall across the state, the sales price to list price ratio is 101.4. That means on average home sellers are selling their houses for 1.4% more than their asking price. That's down slightly from one, a month ago and up only slightly from one year ago. Um, but what do you guys see here? This line here is 100%. This means that on average, um, the homes would sell for the seller's asking price. So take a look at this. So, so in January was really, uh, and maybe the end of 2020, was really the first time where the average across the entire state was over 100%. This is going back to 2007. Obviously, the, the ratio there was super low. Look at this. Uh, in 2008, the sales price to list price ratio was 92%. But really, no over a month ever since 2007 approached over 100%, except for the late 2020. All right, so here's the share of houses that sold above the seller's asking price, and that dipped below 60% for the first time in nine months. So 59%. So you can see here this gradual uh, decline where only 59% sold for over the seller's asking price. Uh, when you look at that, it looks like, oh gosh, it looks like there's a you know slowdown going on, but Look how much elevated this is compared to 2019, right? So this is November. November 2019 was around 30%. So when you compare that to now, homes are selling for over the seller's asking price about twice as much now compared to 2019. 2018, again, uh, interest rates rose quite a bit, so I don't really put a whole lot of weight in there, but 2007 also about the same 30%. So we're still, more houses are selling for over the seller's asking price and really double the numbers we saw in 2017 and 18. I will say though, of course, that you know if this has been declining. So if this continues to decline, that's something definitely to follow, especially as we go into this uh, the spring months, of course, right? All right, so homes that sold over the asking price by county. So I've been talking about this a lot, right? So San Francisco, for whatever reason, homes get listed for far less than the, what they are gonna sell for. So it's very common for houses there to be listed for let's say 700,000, but it's very common for them to be sold for you know a million dollars plus. So. Uh, Alameda County actually led the pack. Um, I can't remember the last time that San Francisco did not um, was not a number one spot here. Uh, normally, San Francisco is uh, the number one um, as far as uh, selling over the asking price. But in any case, Alameda County, which is uh, the East Bay, just east of San Francisco, 86% uh, of the houses there sold for over their asking price in November. That was followed by Santa Clara, San Francisco, San Mateo, Contra Costa, all Bay Area counties, and then Los Angeles after that. Uh, Sacramento too also has um, increased quite a bit as well because we're kind of like over here uh, last month. So Sacramento, about 60%, a little bit more than that, sold for over their asking price. And in contrast, uh, Siskiyou, Lawson, um, Plumas, uh, Mono, Lake counties, all uh, less than uh, 30%. So here's something very important to note as well, and I always talk about this on my channel with the lack of affordability or decreasing affordability for houses right now. Uh, so it says the mortgage payments up by double digits as price and rate both increase from the prior year. This is what hampers affordability so much. If prices increase and also mortgage interest rates also increase, uh, that really puts a damper on affordability. So. One year ago, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged about 2.77, and now it's 3.07. So rates have increased, yet home prices have increased about 12% uh, statewide. And a really good depiction of this is looking at this graphic here. So price growth is a darker line. Uh, so price growth around 11.9%. The mortgage payment growth is up 16.2%. Another reason why this is uh, really bad as well is because 
on average across the state. Most people are not getting paid 16.2% more than last year. Uh, so as uh, the mortgage payment growth increases, um, yet wage growth does not increase at the same rate, that's a big problem. All right, talk about active listings and housing inventory. Um, as you can see here, housing inventory absolutely was uh, skyrocketed in the uh, September 2007 has been more or less on this downward trend ever since then, especially over the past couple of years here. On average, the month supply of inventory is 1.6 months. That's down slightly from one year ago, but we're still at the lowest level in the last seven months. And see here, this is over the last um, two years. Uh, we've been on this downward trend, right? So look at this. The months of inventory is around 4.5 months in January 2019. We've been decreasing quite a bit. We had this, this increase here. We had the state home orders. But right now we're at very, very low levels, uh, not record low levels, but still extremely low levels. And that's one reason why um, home prices have been increasing because we don't have as many houses uh, listed for sale. Uh, so California active listings by month. So this is the number of active listings or the number of houses for sale that are not pending or have not sold uh, by month. And you can see here we have this ebbs and flows every month, every year, I should say, except for 2020. But um, active listings tend to peak around the summer and fall months um, every year. And we're seeing that as well. We had increase and now we're decreasing uh, just like 2018 and 2019. But what do you guys see here? What I see is that you know, we have a very low amount of active listings compared to 2019 and 2018 quite a bit lower. We're at like 20,000 compared to you know over 30,000 uh, in, in 2019-18. So the number of active listings is actually down 22.4% compared to one year ago. One reason is because we're not seeing as many new listings hit the market, but also we have high buyer demand. So any houses that do get listed for sale um, on average sell very quickly, and that depletes the inventory that we have. I want to point out this because uh, as I mentioned, interest rates reach about 5% in late November 2018, and look what that did to the market. It absolutely cooled it off uh, because we had rates increase uh, greatly in a short period of time, and then rates decrease, and that's why we had this decrease of active listings here because demand really picked up. But because rates reach about 5%, we had a really big increase of active listings by about 30%. So here's a number of new listings. This is for existing single family houses. What that means is not new houses, but for single family homes. So we had 15,112 in November compared to last year, 17,000, 16,000, and 19,766 in 2018. But we've had a decrease of new listings for what? One, two, three, four, five straight months, down 12.8% from a year ago. Sales continue to outpace new listings. So um, on a historic level, we tend to see more new active listings compared to new home sales. We saw that in 2018 and 2019 because new active listings is in purple here. Home sales is in green. Uh, we tend to have less home sales than new active listings, but ever since the really July-ish uh, of 2020, we've had more home sales compared to new active listings. And that's one reason why inventory has been decreasing. And I can see here the big disparity in November, right? We've had 23,000 home sales, yet only 15,000 active listings. A huge disparity, um, especially when you compare to um, prior uh, months as well. All right, let's talk about market uh, competitiveness. So days in the market is at 11 days compared to one year ago, it's nine days. We've had this decrease really ever since, um, I wanna say 2020, but really look at 2010, really has this decrease, gradual decrease in the number of days it took to sell a house. Uh, but right now we're still at 11 days. It's a quite a bit of, of a big increase compared to uh, nine days really. But as you look here and um, compared to prior years, we're still at very low levels. Uh, you look at a home selling in 11 days on average, uh, it's pretty remarkable. Other thing I wanna point out too, um, and something we definitely should be following here in the next uh, several months, is the number of listings where the seller reduced their asking price. So right now, that only represents about 25% of all home sales right now, uh, which is very, very low levels. You look at 2021, look at it compared to 2019, 18, 17, I mean, far less than any other uh, year that we've had in recent memory. So right now we're at 25%, but look at 2019, it was about 40%, same for 2018. So it shows that we have, we have this um, high demand from home buyers and home sellers 
are not having to re reduce their asking price. At least three out of four home sellers are not uh, reducing their asking price. All right, I wanna share at a high level here um, how each county fare because obviously there's some pretty big differences here. So let's go ahead and dive into uh, this part of the video as well. So if you're still with me, thank you so for still watching the video because this is a long video. I have a lot of information to share with you guys. And by the way, the California Association of Realtors has not issued their press release, but I have a number, number of different uh, websites I look at um, on their website in order to get this information for you guys. So right now, I think this is probably the uh, first video you probably will watch with November's uh, stats because they don't have their press release issued yet. So in any case, I'll let you know if, if any of these numbers change because uh, they haven't released all this really yet. Going back here, California single family houses, a 782,000 is the median sold price in November. One year ago, it was 698,000. Prices decreased by 2%, and then also home prices increased 12% uh, compared to one year ago. Home sales actually increased and then on a um, compared to a one month, but last year have they decreased though. Uh, again, condos reached an all-time high of 620,000 um, compared to one year ago. That's a 19% increase. And look at this compared to month to month basis. So this is again, October, 2021 compared to November, 2021. Home prices for single family houses decreased by 2%, and then they just did the opposite for condos, uh, the increased 2%. And in my opinion, this is due to the lack of affordability where home prices are still elevated for single family houses. So San Francisco Bay Area, median sold price, $1.3 million. Gosh, you compare that to the Central Valley, $450,000. And San Francisco Bay, uh, when you compare prices compared to one year ago, they increased the most in the San Francisco Bay Area compared to any other major regions, and they decreased the lease in the Central Coast. They only increased by 9% only. I mean, uh, on average, uh, home prices have increased about three to 5% on average. So we're still well above um, historical averages, but still when you compare to other regions this month, we're at um, half the price appreciation in the Central Coast compared to the San Francisco Bay Area. Home sales have also decreased um, quite a bit in the Central Coast as well. All right, so San Francisco Bay Area, this is all pretty remarkable to me. So 2.2 million is the uh, the highest median sold price in the entire state. And San Mateo County, they actually increased 34.7%. One thing I wanna point out with San Mateo though, they have a lot of luxury home sales. So this number of 34.7%, can be skewed by disproportionate share of uh, ultra uh, luxury home sales compared to just luxury home sales of uh, $2 million. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the increase 34.7%. And again, this, this does not mean your home value has increased this much. We're, this is only based on the ho houses that sold in November. Uh, in any case, pretty remarkable. Santa Clara increased 22%, Alameda 23.9%. Um, Marin County, this is pretty remarkable to me because Marin actually um, prices decreased 8.9% from last month. And then home sales have decreased 33% from one year ago. And Napa also decreased, um, prices there decreased 1.6% compared to one year ago. Look at San Francisco though. San Francisco has increased 11.9% and then home values there or the median sold price increased 4.3%. Quite a bit of different when you look at Marin County and Napa, which are just north of San Francisco. So Southern California, Orange County led the pack again. 1.1 million was the median sold price. Uh, prices increased there, 23.7% from a year ago. Monterey County, this is pretty remarkable too. We look at Santa Barbara and Santa Cruz, right? All over $1 million. Uh, Santa Barbara used to be higher than Santa Cruz. Now they're well above Santa Barbara's numbers, uh, over 200,000. And home prices there in Santa Barbara increased 19.8% uh, from one month ago. But look at Santa Cruz uh, compared to one year ago, 20% increase, whereas Santa Barbara only increased by 5%. Uh, Santa Barbara home sales have faltered as well uh, compared to one month ago and one year ago. All right, let's talk about the Central Valley. I'm a realtor in Sacramento, I serve the greater Sacramento area. We, let's go over how each of the counties fared in Central Valley. So Glen County increased quite a bit compared to one month ago. I think that was the biggest increase in Central Valley yet was, and also prices and compared to one year ago. Kings County and Madera led the pack there as well. So Placer County, that includes Roseville, uh, Rockland, all the way up to Lake Tahoe, so a pretty big area. And Roseville, Rockland, out, by the way, is like about half an hour away from Sacramento. Median sold price, 650,000 there. Sacramento, 515. Prices increased around 16 and 17% respectively uh, compared to one year ago. 
And then home sales, uh, the um, home sales have decreased uh, quite a bit, um, both uh, in both counties as well. All right, so far north, so Lassen County, 264,000. That's actually the most affordable county in all of the state. If you go by the median sold price in November, 2021, this is the lowest amount. Values there have increased 14.5%. In stark contrast, um, Plumas County and Tehama actually decreased uh, compared to one year ago. A lot of people ask this, and I'm also curious about this as well because most counties uh, across the nation have increased compared to one year ago. But when you look at these counties here, they have uh, been faltering for whatever reason, especially Tehama County. Uh, Amador County, really good for wine tasting. Uh, median sold price there, 432000 increase of 20%. Every single county in these other counties in California have increased by double digits, except for Lake County, Mendocino, and Mono. All their counties have increased by double digits. So pretty remarkable there. So that's uh, today's video. I hope you got some value out of this video with this long video. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you got any value out of this video whatsoever, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. And also click the link below if you're looking for a real estate agent referral in your neck of the woods. Hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.